look at this. The parts that were upward, like facing upward, relative to gravity, are rusted to heck. But underneath it, look at that, it's, it's pretty good. So this kind of confirms my theory that the way things are rusting in this garage is just because the moisture is floating around in the air from the fog and everything, and because there's no door on the front of this garage, and then it just sort of settles, but the, the only way it's going to settle really is on the top of something, as gravity, you know, lets it float down like that. It's not really going to float up like that so much. And then this rail here, which was directly beneath this one, so this was on the top, up there, and then this one was here. That one's pretty good. Look. So these were both similarly exposed except this one I guess you could say had the other one above it as protection. This one's pretty much fine. <laughs> it's almost as if there's like a like a computer program projecting downward from above where the rust is going to go and if anything's occluded or in shadow of something else it won't get rusty. And this seems to be happening on my big machine as well. Interesting. It's a lot easier, a lot easier and quicker than putting it together was, that's for sure. Okay, that's all done. I've uh, scored a fairly decent pile of bits and pieces that are still perfectly usable. Uh, these will probably have a bit of dust in them that will need to be cleaned out, I imagine. All the other stuff's fine. Motors will be fine. Uh, usually one side of each of these motors is a bit sort of crusty like that, just from sitting there for so long. But they'll be perfectly fine as well. Got some nice big pieces of aluminium, and um, now that I have a big CNC, I can deal with these no problem at all. And in particular, this one here that has... Um, I was going to say no holes. I mean, there are some holes, but it's not like this one where there's holes all over the place. And these are 8mm. I don't have any 8mm plates. All that, all that other one that I have there is 6mm, so this lets me make some parts that might need to be 8mm thick. I'm sure I'll be able to do lots of interesting things with that. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of screws over there, bolts and stuff. All the stainless steel ones held up pretty well. The um, guy at the bolt shop said Stainless steel and aluminium is not a good combination, but I think that was mainly, he was probably talking about having it outdoors in the weather where it's going to be in water all the time. But um, from, from what I can tell here, stainless steel and aluminium together sitting there in a little bit of a damp garage for many, many years has not been a problem at all for these bolts anyway. Uh, that doesn't work, I'll probably throw it out of the way. I might try, see if I can sell this. It's a little bit crusty there too, but should work all right, that um, is broken. E-stop that I never used, I might try and sell that too. Or I could, maybe I could use this on my next, next creation. Um, these rails here, I think I'm just going to throw those away. There's only one that's really any good still. And these days I don't think I would use unsupported rails like this. I would either use the square rails or the um, supported rails, round ones. That would be fine. Um, yeah, so... That's about it for this video. Probably not that interesting, but I thought while I was putting it together, I realized that I'd made a big series about this machine, and I thought I might just uh, upload a little video showing the end, <laughs> the demise of the machine as it is, as it were, for the um, final chapter. And I've been meaning to do this for quite a long time, actually, dismantle everything, um, but I just never really got around to it. And as for why I suddenly had the motivation to do this now, well, a few days ago, I found myself wanting to free up that bench space for a little something else that has arrived. 
but that will have to be a story for another time. Thanks for watching. Bye.